Welcome back. This is going to be the final segment of this series, installing the empennage fairing on the RV-8. took a little longer just due to some time constraints as well as being down with the flu. So I'm just matching the bottom and the top fairing. I'm just going to trim the bottom fairing until we get a nice tight fit between the top and the bottom, as snug as we can get it so that we can create it perfect with the Dremel tool that you'll see here. So once we've got it clicked in place, we're going to come in at the Dremel tool and we're going to create uh, the gap there. It ends up being about 3 30 seconds of an inch. And this is the nice clean way to do it, is to cut that line with everything installed. And you get a nice professional looking match. Then I'm just going to cut the bottom fairing on the front and the back. Match each side so it looks the same. And match that top fairing. Here's how we get the match the curvature surface between the bottom and the top fairing. We're just going to use a disc on the on a, a drill and we'll create that curved surface so that we get a perfect match between the top and the bottom fiberglass. We'll go obviously go back with uh, with sandpaper after that. And using that eighth inch fine line tape to create the nice curvature for the bottom fairing. and using a file just to get the edge perfect. And then we're gonna take this back to the workbench and work on it a little bit more over there. So I'll just give it a shot of primer just so you guys can see how this ends up. See how nice a transition you get using that Dremel tool technique to divide the top and the bottom fairing. Obviously the edges need to be cleaned up and there's a lot more sanding and filling that needs to go on here. So I'm just gonna remove a rivet in the back. I think this is the second rivet from the trailing edge of the horizontal stab and we're going to use that to install the bottom fairing. And the same technique to mark where that hole ends up. Just draw yourself a long line, about 12 inches long, measure 2, 3, 4 inches from the hole so that you have a reference. Once this is clicked in place, put the ruler back in place and then now we know exactly where that hole needs to end up. All right, so I showed you how to make flanges on the previous video, uh, but that was when we had two pieces and we cut them, uh, we had a single piece, sorry, and we cut them into two. Here, we have two separate pieces, and now we're gonna create a flange to, to screw them together. So how do we do that when there's two separate pieces? Well, we're just gonna measure, first of all, to get a clearance on the bottom. We'll cut that away so that we don't have any over overlap of the pieces, but we want it to be as tight as possible. And we'll just use a straight block so now we have a nice match between the top and the bottom. And once we're happy with the gap, as you see there, we're gonna use some clamps, some clear tape, and some wax, and we're gonna lay up fiberglass over top of both pieces on top of the wax. So obviously it's not gonna to bond to the two parts, but we're gonna use it to hold the two parts together so that we can pop them off, take it back to the workbench, and then lay up a flange on the inside. So just use three layers of normal fiberglass tape. And I use fiberglass here just because it is a bit of a compound curve. If it was a perfectly flat surface, you could get away with just riveting or rather just uh, drilling and clicking in some aluminum. So three layers of fiberglass in with our peel ply, let it dry overnight. And now we have a way to drill and bond those two parts together. And here's a lesson I learned. So if you're laying up fiberglass over top of wax, use some uh, tape to hold everything in place because it's not really bonding to the fiberglass. It's only on top of wax, so it will slide down. Once it's all dry, 24 hours, we're gonna come in and we're gonna drill three holes. It's a beauty of working with fiberglass as we can drill as many holes for sets as we want. And we can always go back and fill these in. So drill these three holes before you take any tape off, any peel ply off, because it's only sitting on wax. So it's gonna pop off right away if you start messing with it. And we'll drill three holes in the bottom. So now we got a piece of dried fiberglass three holes in the bottom, three holes in the top, and now we have a way to hold the parts together on the workbench. 
So you see there, if I was going to pull, pull the peel ply off earlier before drilling, you see that the part just pops off. We'll just trim to get rid of the ugly edges of it. And this is going to be our template to connect the top and the bottom together as we create the flange on the inside. Click it all back together and that's how that works. Now we can go ahead and lay up the flange on the inside like you've seen in the previous videos. Scuff it up with some 50 grit emery cloth. And I'm gonna use carbon fiber. A lot of questions ask me about what kind of carbon fiber I use. This is called Tilly Weave. It's very loosely wound, so it's good for projects like this that have compound curves. But it does come apart relatively easily. It cuts easily. Um, but you have to be careful when you work with it because it doesn't take a lot to unweave this stuff as I'll show you here. So that's why we put it up dry and put the epoxy over top of it. So now we'll create the flange like we did on the other videos. We'll put some clear masking tape where we don't want it to bond and that's going to be on the bottom part of the fairing. We'll cover that with wax. And then we'll lay up four layers of carbon fiber. It will bond to the top fairing and it will not bond to the bottom fairing. And then we'll have a flange to screw these two pieces together. So there we got the West System epoxy and I'm just gonna soak the top flange so that we get a nice bond of the four layers of carbon fiber. First layer of carbon fiber, get it nice and impregnated with the epoxy. Like I said, we'll put four layers on here. I did end up moving the bottom clicos on the bottom half of the fairing because they're a little bit tight to where I wanted the, the flange to be. So there ended up being a, a few more holes in the bottom flange than initially I wanted, but it's fiberglass, so it's no big deal. Once everything's done, you just go back and fill everything in. Once you're happy, cover with peel ply, just to soak up the excess resin really. And we'll let that dry overnight, and then we'll come back and we'll drill our screw holes. So about 3 8 inch down from the edge, I'll mark a line, we're going to drill two screw holes. That vertical line that you saw me draw there is where the spar, the vertical stab ends up. So you got to be careful where you drill these holes here, make sure you're, not, you're clearing everything on the inside. Just a number 40 drill bit for now, click over everything together and that's where we're going to end up with two number 6 screws attaching the bottom to the top fairing. Pop it all apart, you can see the extra holes that we talked about where I moved the flange a little bit and then everything should pull apart with the wax. Remove the peel ply and now you have a flange that we're just going to trim up to pleasing shape and then add some nut plates to it. I'll just mark where I want the flange to be drilled. It has to be inside of that blue line you see there because that's where the spar of the vertical stab ends up. So we clear that nicely. And we'll just use a file and sandpaper to get it all where we want it. Now back into the bottom fairing, we'll drill it out to number 28. And we're going to install our nut plates now. We're going to use click bond nut plates like you've seen in the previous videos. So I'll show you again here. We're going to go in some 50 grit sandpaper and rough it up. Pour out our epoxy from click bond, mix it all up nicely, and use our nut plate. So this is an excellent application of a click bond nut plate um, where we really don't have access to rivet a nut plate on the bottom of the horizontal stab in this application. And we could use nut certs, but this is really a slick way to go, and I, I really enjoy the Click Bond products. So we just insert it there, no riveting. Just pull it flush until it squeezes out the edge. 
and let it dry overnight. Really the key is prep. And there's the one on the front rib of the horizontal step. 24 hours later, you can come back and pull it out. So here we're countersinking the number 28 holes for the screws for the Tinnerman washers that are going to hold this in place. So that's a Tinnerman washer. requires quite a big countersink, so just take your time. And we'll do the same thing on the back of the bottom fairing. So when it's all attached, everything sits nice and flush. 24 hours later, we pop out the little silicone that holds the nut plates in place. And we'll add the nut plates to the top fairing as well. This is one application where you could rivet them on because you do have access. But this is a very quick way of getting the nut plates in place. And we'll add two to the inside of the rib on the horizontal stab as well. Here's on the right side, the most aft one for the bottom fairing. And here's the front one for the front rib. Twenty-four hours later, we'll pull out all the silicone that holds the nut plates in place, and now into final assembly, popping the top on, screwing the bottom fairing into those nut plates. And we're finished. All that's left is some sanding and filing the edges. So I'll spare you guys that since you've seen it in the other videos, but much happier with the fit of this. Hope you guys enjoyed this project. Ended up a little bit longer than what I expected. So what's next for us? Well. After sanding and filling this, the airplane should be ready for paint, which is going to happen in 20 days, so it's coming down to crunch time. Also some exciting things that are coming up, the airbrush for the plenum and the air intake are in the mailbox, so you guys will see those on future videos. And I'm also going to start an introduction series, so if you got some friends who are new into building aircraft, we're going to start with some basics, tools, how to build these airplanes, what's involved, the admin stuff, and the technical stuff. So build yourself something, take it for a rip, and see you guys on the next one.